to fall in that hole. And then I took um, these braces, drove them into the ground, and then zip tied the camera to the pole with the braces dropped in the ground and the styrofoam. So the camera's in the ground, right? And for a while, you know, we we did still didn't see anything on the camera. Well, one evening, um, the guy who's the only person that lives back there in Bayou Sauvage, Bayou Sauvage, calls me, and he says, uh, "James, he's like uh, something's going on out here because I hear a lot of howling and it sounds like women screaming." And he was like, "Did you do anything?" I'm like, "Well, I can't. I went out there and I urinated on the camera." He was like, "Why would you do that?" I was like, because I wanted to get some activity. He was like, well, you don't live out here. That's not a good idea. He was like, um, I'm going to call you back. Well, that very next morning, like we talked that evening, that morning at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, that camera was yanked out of the ground and drug off. You could see the footage of the camera being drugged, and then you see the camera kind of splash into water. So, um, unfortunately, that wasn't on auto record, and it didn't auto record it. But it was yanked, it was drugged, and then you saw it splash into the water. So I called him back, and I said, hey, man, do you mind going to check on my camera? He's like, sure, I'll go. I said, well, I'll try and meet you out there. But he beats me to the spot. And you can see the where the camera was ripped out of the ground. You can see where it was drugged through the grass. It kind of snakes through the grass. And then you can see where it's plopped into the water. And the, um, the styrofoam part that was in the ground was floating upwards, but the rest of the camera was in the water. Okay. Um, so now he and I are out there talking, and he's like, bro, you can't do that. He's like, you know, because it's it pisses them off. This is their territory. And he literally has an area that he does not go to. So he has there's these kind of yellow bars on the levee out there. And the bars are put there. Kind of imagine like vertical poles that are jammed into the ground, right? They're designed to keep people from riding on a levee and going back up to that area. Well, he lives back there. And if you look it up, you you can look it up on a camera. I mean, on a Google Earth, look up New Orleans East Little Woods neighborhood. And then you will look on the backside of the Little Woods neighborhood. There's a big turn. It's called Haynes Boulevard. If you're in that turn on Haynes Boulevard from Google Maps, you'll see the levee. And then you'll see houses, one house, literally one house on the water. That's this guy's house. And so um, he won't go past the second set of yellow poles for no, nothing. There's two sets. He will not go past that second set under any circumstances. He went past that second set because I asked him to, and then because I went out there with him. But other than that, he, he doesn't go because he says, man, you know, there's things back there that need to be respected. During that same conversation with him while we're out there, um, he starts to break down the area, things about, you know, the area that I, I had heard of, but I didn't really, you know, understand. Like that whole area was Native American land. But, you know, in New Orleans, there's this, you have the Mardi Gras Indians, which are like black Indians. Mm -hmm. Well, that area was the Native American Indians. But back in those days, back in the day, they used to, um, they used to, pretty much intermingle with black people in the area. So that's how you got the black Indians, the very, very dark skinned black Indians. He started to show me the burial mounds that were back there. And you can see on the terrain, it looks flat. And then there's this huge mounds with trees that are growing at the top of them. And he was like, look, these are all burial mounds. He's like, these are all Native American burial mounds. And he's like, that's why you have all these various creatures back here. And I was like, well, what the hell else is back here? And he starts telling me all kinds of crazy stuff that he's seen. And we really get into dog, man. He's like, no, that's definitely back here. So I've seen that before. I've seen it on my porch before. Um, so I say all that to say this. There's a couple of things that you can, if you find yourself on, a, on Native American land, right? Um Indian land. I don't know. People got to be so politically correct today. I'm going to call it Indian. Indian land. And you find yourself next to a gigantic burial mound, and then you find yourself near water or any other natural resource, food source, and that's what people don't understand. They need a food source. Then you probably are in dogman territory. Okay. Nine times out of ten, you're in dogman territory. Either it's a territory they visit and protect, or it's something that they're stationary and they're there. 
mostly they migrate back and forth through areas, and those are kind of their rest stop areas. All right. Well, that's a that's some good information. Um, one of the things I'd like to back up just a little bit. You talked about uh, genetically engineered. Um, how how long has this been going on for? And is it like is it well, we know- here in the United States only? Is this a worldwide thing? Well, we know that genetic engineering worldwide has been going on for the past 100 years. Um, but it's been, it's right in front of our faces. It's just that we as, we as human beings are busy with other things. So let's just walk down the road and kind of think logically. So in the 1930s or the 1940s in Russia, they did a, an experiment where there was they called, I think it said, it was chimpanzee man, right? Half chimpanzee, half human. Um, it had the face of a human, the body of a chimpanzee. The the freaking Russian scientists got so afraid they killed it, right? That was in the 30s or 40s. You can look it up. I could be wrong, but it was significantly, uh, significant amount of time ago to where we know that the technology has advanced to the point to where pre- they can pretty much do whatever they want, right? So we, let's just say, just I, I know this is, wrong but let's say 1950s i know it was before the 1950s but let's just say 1950s so in the 1950s they were able to successfully make half man half chimpanzee right same thing off of you know planet of the apes all right skipping forward we have gmo food gmo strawberries we have potatoes i mean tomatoes that are purple that can cure cancer we have gmo mosquitoes we have pretty much everything we have glowing cats that are immune to diseases all these things are documented that you can look up right now as i'm speaking and and find yeah and they have glowing pigs too glowing fish those are the things that we know about right um and what i've come to discover is that the things that we know about are always far behind the things that we don't know about Right. One evening, one of my witnesses calls me and he says, man, I've been getting contacts from this guy who claims he knows where Dog Man came from. I'm like, okay, let's get him on the phone. He's like, I can't get him on the phone. I'm like, okay, well, give me his email address. Let me email him. He's like, look, I'm going to do a chat with him because that's what we've been doing. I'm going to share my screen with you. So he shares his screen um, and he's chatting with the guy and they they go back and forth. And the guy says, go look into um, the hurricane, what I can't remember the name of the hurricane was the one that completely wiped out South Florida. I mean, it was, it was maybe in the uh, late nineties. I mean, it completely wiped out Florida. I mean, it was terrible hurricane and look into the laboratory that was located there in the escaped animals. And I'm like, yeah, I remember they talked about that's how the pythons got into the, um, the Everglades is because there was a laboratory that, that had pythons and all kind of exotic animals and they escaped into the swamps. And he's like, well, I worked at that laboratory. This is where your dog men come from and a whole bunch of other cryptids in Florida. Wow. So we start trying to do the research and you, you, you cannot find it. All you found was news articles that talked about kind of escaped endangered species of animals that escaped into the Everglades. Right. And so, because I can guarantee you that the real information that we look for is, we're looking for is classified, you have to understand how to read the information that you have and look at things from a 30,000 foot view. All right. So, just recently, the Senate, the U.S. Senate, voted down a bill that would prohibit the creation of human animal chimeras, right? You can look it up. It was just yesterday, I think. Today is that. It was yesterday they voted it down. And I talked about it on YouTube, but people didn't quite understand it. So for a minute, everybody, imagine we're 30,000 feet in the air looking down on a city, right? And we just want to be above the problem to see the solution, right? So on our left-hand side, we have the information that we know for a fact that they've been genetically modifying animals since before the 1950s, right? We've seen the genetic modification of our food, our mosquitoes, our plants, our fish, our cats, our pigs. Everybody's heard about the spider goat whose milk is used to make body armor. All these things have come out, right? 
Mm-hmm. Again, again, we're 30,000 feet in the air. We're not thinking about it from our just individual perspective. All right. We're 30. 30-